Hello everyone, my name is Elliot, and today we're going to be teaching our University of Reddit course on Twitter, and specifically we're going to be discussing communication theory that applies to it. Uh, the first thing we want to look at is one of the most basic theories of communication, also known as the Shannon Weaver model. For this example, we'll place Shannon on one side of the building, and on the other we have Weaver. Both people would like to speak to each other, and there are a few options to be used. Since we are discussing Twitter in particular, let's provide a completely realistic situation for why two people would be forced to use Twitter to communicate. One option is that they can try to speak loud enough to hear each other through the walls, but this makes it even more difficult to understand one another. Consider now if there was a pit of lava opening in one of the rooms. They clearly need to be able to hear one another's instructions, or they could have a bit of a situation on their hands. The wall is preventing each encoded message from being decoded properly, which classifies it as being noise because the communication channel is not open. Now consider that both Shannon and Weaver had their phones, except they can't just call each other because the floor of lava that is opening is also making an incredibly loud sound. Clearly, this is also noise that will affect message decoding, and is known as physical noise. Well, luckily for Shannon and Weaver, they can use text messages or even Twitter to communicate. Noise in this situation will be determined by how clearly each person can encode their message. If you write or type as if you were a lolcat or use a lot of difficult abbreviations, the message may not be decoded properly. This is known as semantic noise. Finally, psychological noise is another form of noise that can affect how a message is decoded. This is the internal noise that affects how you perceive messages. These result from preconceived notions we bring to conversations such as racial stereotypes, reputations, biases, and assumptions. I would animate this as well, but due to psychological noise, this may make you see the stereotypical notions rather than the purpose that I've intended. Instead, Shannon can now just wear a top hat. I'm sure somewhere that makes sense. You have now learned the basics of the Shannon Weaver model of communication in a completely realistic situation where you would have to use Twitter. Now for more detail, let's take a look at what the Shannon Weaver model actually looks like. The first thing to note, both Shannon and Weaver are their last names, and they are both male. As you see before you, you see the actual model of the Shannon Weaver model of communication. You start with the source, who encodes a message. The message is delivered through a medium, in this particular, since we're using computer-mediated communication, a phone or handheld or uh, device that allows you to use Twitter, and then you will be sending through that channel to the receiver. That receiver will first decode the message before they can understand what the source had sent though. Uh, from that information, the receiver will provide feedback, and that creates a loop of communication. Uh, as we had mentioned before, noise is anything that will be affecting how that message is decoded. In particular, there are three types of noise when it comes to communication. Psychological noise, physical noise, and semantic noise. All three of which we had covered to some extent in the example. In order for communication to be effective, noise must be reduced. If you only have 140 characters, you may believe using acronyms and shortened text is necessary, but it's not. There is an art to using Twitter, and if you can deliver messages that are easy to decode, people will be more willing to interact and follow you. You don't have to jeopardize how you speak just because you have limited space to do it. The next topic we'll discuss is computer-mediated communication. Now essentially what this is, is a grouping of various different theories that apply to communication as you would use between different means of electronic communications. So for example, anytime you're using Twitter to tweet or discuss or speak to someone else on Twitter, you're using CMC or computer-mediated communications. There are various different theories that are associated with computer-mediated communications, but as you may have noted, the Shannon Weaver model of communication applies to general communication and CMC as well. Now there are two particular parts of CMC that are worth noting here. There is synchronous and asynchronous communication. Now what this means is synchronous is in real time, whereas asynchronous is where you can leave a message and come back at any time and then reply. Now as communication is always constantly evolving, this is a little bit different on Twitter. 
It is designed to be asynchronous. However, if you are representing a brand or a company, people expect almost immediate responses and generic responses won't cut it. Though Twitter is asynchronous, most people perceive it to be synchronous. This is the result of a few things. Other brands have implemented a proper strategy for responses and increased general expectations about them. Tweets have a very short lifespan if not directed towards a username, and the social media world is all about instant gratification. Instant news, instant conversations, and instant connections. Another example is if you are a job seeker, it's easy to find people who work at companies, and all you have to do is start a conversation. You may not want to skip the physical networking events, but it never hurts to start a relationship where you can. Thank you for joining today, and if you have any questions, feel free to post them into the Reddit section or onto the YouTube post as well.